Hello, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And happy Grandparents Day to all you grandparents out there. As we recognize Grandparents Day and celebrate all our grandparents, I would like to talk about grandparents and the role they play or the role that they should play in our lives and in the lives of their children, their grandchildren. We will use a really... Um, familiar verse. Whenever we, we talk about grandparents and especially grandmothers, we go to this verse. This is the go-to verse. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 through 4. But just before I read that um, scripture, I was, my wife was telling me this, um, this joke with grandparents. And it was this grandmother, she was talking with her, her grandchild and uh, she was pointing at different things and said, well, honey, what color is this? And the child would tell her. Then she'd go on to something else, and she found it really amusing. It was fun for her. And she kept on going out. After a while, the child headed to the door and said, Grandma, you're going to have to try to figure out some of those, those colors yourself. And I thought it was pretty funny. But um, <clears throat> on to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Through five. I thank God, whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. The first thing that Paul does in this set of verses is to acknowledge his own ancestry. In other words, he acknowledged his parents, his grandparents, his great-grandparents. They had left him a legacy of serving and worshiping Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And then he goes on and he tells Timothy. He's, he now focuses on Timothy's ancestry. Verse 5. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. It seems to me that grandmother Lois was first one or was first was the first one to be converted in her family. And it seems to me that she was converted or she was what was saved under Paul's ministry. Then her daughter Eunice was converted because of the faith of grandmother Lois. Then young Timothy, seeing the faith and seeing what, what his mother and his grandmother uh, relationship with Jesus he saw that, he experienced that, and now it dwells, Paul thought it dwelt in him as well. The Bible speaks about, or the Bible does not speak about Timothy's father. It doesn't speak about his grandfather, only his grandmother and his mother. Maybe his father, his grandfather, were not believers. Or maybe they were both dead. Or maybe Eunice was just a single parent and her mother, Lois, was helping her raise her son, which is not at all unlikely. Right now, statistics say that 2.7 million grandparents are raising grandchildren. Out of that, 1 million grandmothers are the sole parental influence for their grandchild or for their grandchildren. We take our hats off to you grandparents, every one of you who have raised or who are still raising your grandchild or who are raising your grandchildren. Grandparents, we salute you. Thank you for your faithfulness with which the world could be a totally different place for your grandchild. So thank you. But you know what? That 
is what grandparents do. Grandparents are faithful. They're faithful in prayer. They're faithful in love. They're faithful in encouragement. They're faithful in doing the right thing. Grandparents are faithful to tell their children about the love of Jesus. And that is probably the most important thing. Many, many, probably multiplied millions of children, their, their testimony is, my grandmother. And a lot, my grandfather, but the majority, my grandmother. So grandparents, we have a responsibility to tell our grandchildren about the love of Jesus. You know, our own granddaughter, little Juliana, she, she lives two states away, so we don't get to spend the time that we would like to spend with her, the quality time that we desire, because she's just too far away. But, you know, we, we don't get to enjoy and experience all the different stages of her development that, um, that we would like to. But we have video chats, and I don't get to talk to her. And I, it's basically my fault, I suppose. But my wife, her grandmother, she talks with them every single day, and sometimes several times a day on the video chat. But for me, video chats don't really take the place, and I guess for everybody else, but it doesn't really take the place of in person. It doesn't take that place of the physical touch. But even though I, I don't get to talk with Juliana every single day, I talk to the Lord every single day about her. I try to be faithful in prayer for her. There's so many things that children have to deal with these days. They have to battle against some of the wildest things that you, you, you could even, when we were children, we could not even imagine some of the things that they have to face today. But this summer, we spent two weeks with Juliana. She came up and she spent two weeks with us. So I took time off of work and my wife and Ari, we all took time off and we had a really good time. Every day we did something something that was fun. We did bumper cars. We did laser tag. We did bowling. We went skating. We did other indoor games. And we, 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 we tried to pack the day with fun stuff. And her favorite was bumper cars. We rode bumper cars until all of the spinning and the bumping was making me oozy. But we had a really good time. We enjoyed our time with our granddaughter. When she got back home to her parents and uh, we were video chapping, she would say, Pat, Pat, remember what, when we did this or remember when we did that? I would say, yeah, Pat, Pat, remember. And I would say, yeah, yeah, we had a good time, didn't we? Yeah, and she would say, yeah, she would laugh and then she would recall something else. But that's what grandparents do. They create memories, lasting memories. And that is what we were trying to do with Juliana. We were trying to create memories, experiences that she would remember. So while she was here, we also tried to have serious conversations with Juliana. We, we, we talked to her about Jesus. We reinforced the Bible stories we reminded her of how much Jesus loves her. And her grandmother would pray with her every night. Every night we would pray. And we even, or I even took the time to tell her about the lake of fire. And it was her first time hearing about the lake of fire. But I don't believe that it's too early to start telling our children and teaching them about things like that, about the things of God. 
You have to catch them when they're still young in the early days before the school systems begin to corrupt their minds with hate and with racism and with anti-God teaching and with their sexual perverseness propaganda that they're just, just piling on our children these days. Grandparents, remind your children of the love of God. Remind them of His goodness. But also, I want you to remember to remind them of His judgment. We cannot separate the two. And I know that there's a school of thought out there that teaches that it doesn't matter what you do. You can do anything and that will never ever. There's nothing you can do to separate you from the love of God. And uh, and. I want to say that that's false. That's a false teaching. It gives us a false sense of security. It lets people become lax in their Christian faith, in their Christian walk. It makes them become laxed in their fight for their souls and the souls for their loved ones. If it doesn't matter what you do, you can do whatever you want to do and you have no problems. You will never be separated from God. Then you go out and you do whatever you want to do. But it does matter what you do. It matters a whole lot. Yes, God remains faithful. Even if we're not faithful, God remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. So Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. But my friends, there is a, a, a way that is a right way. We cannot just lull or, 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 or children to sleep. We cannot just let them be lax. We have to teach them the right way for there is a right way. Because there's coming a time when the, the, the sheep will be separated from the goats. The goats will be on the left and Jesus will send them to the place that's prepared for them. But for the sheep on his right, they will go and they will be with Jesus forever and ever. And we need our children to recognize this, that there's coming a judgment day and we have to give an account for every word and everything that we've done. So what will, what, what will determine the separation? The deeds that we have done. Deeds that keep, you, keep us faithful to Jesus, these good deeds, these are what will be judged. So it's imperative that we teach our children and we teach our grandchildren that there is a right way and there is a wrong way. Now here is the right way. Walk ye in it. Grandparents, if you're not praying on a daily basis for your children and for your grandchildren, even if they're not around you, you should be praying daily for them. And if you're not doing that, you are doing them a huge disservice. And I say, shame on you. And I'm not talking about a little one-minute prayer, a little arrow prayer, because you got something pressing to do. So you just quickly mention their name and, and get up and go do whatever it is that you want to do. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a good season of prayer for your grandchildren, for your children, for your offspring. You know, I met a man just the other day. He said something like, well, when I asked him how he's doing, he said, well, I'm alive. And I said, well, that's a good thing as opposed to the alternative. And he started to list a whole bunch of things that was going on in his life. And there's a lot of stuff that was going on in his life, I admit. But he, he kind of suggested that he would welcome the alternative. And I said, surely, surely, sir, you don't mean that. Surely your children and your grandchildren need you to pray for them. Surely you, you, you don't want to just leave them. Just imagine the sorrow that they would feel at your loss. And I mean, the way that he just said it so callously. And I understand that, that, that the world now is trying its hardest. To, to become something that, that, that is not desirable. They, they made it a place that's no longer like enjoyable to be. I understand that. I get it. 
but I also recognize that we, our, our children need us to be here. Our grandchildren need us to be here to pray for them. I also recognize that, that we're all striving for the day that we will be with the Lord and that we will be with him forever. We're all striving. We're focused on that. I, I understand that. I get it. Even Paul said in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 through 26, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet, which shall I choose? I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Paul recognized his responsibility to the church, to his church family. He understood the importance of his role as a teacher. He understood his role as an intercessor, as an example setter. And after after all of this, he, he, he thought about the two. He said, you know, I can't even decide because for me, it's better to go and be with Jesus. It's better for me to go and be with Christ, the one who I serve, the one whom I love. But when I think about it, I guess it's better for me to stay here with you, that I might intercede for you, that I might teach you, that I might set an example for you. And that is what we're trying to do for our children and for our grandchildren. We have to set that example. So after talking with this man and, and, and telling him and explaining to him about the need for prayer and, and praying for his children and his grandchildren, he told me that he made his way and they will have to make their way. And I thought, wow, it, it, I could hardly believe what it was that he was saying. It just kind of blew my mind. He must have been having a really, really rough day. But grandparents, it is our duty, it's our responsibility to pray for our children and our grandchildren. Lord forbid that we should sin against them by not praying for our children and our grandchildren. The other thing that grandparents do is grandparents leave a legacy for their grandchildren. You, you, uh, you set an example for your children and for your grandchildren to follow. And how sad it is, how disappointing it is to have grandparents who act like they don't care about anything or they don't care about anyone. They don't set an example for their children to follow. They don't set an example for their grandchildren to follow. How sad and how disappointing it is when grandparents who do not encourage their children and grandchildren, who do not teach them, who do not reprove them, who do not correct them, they just let them do whatever they want to do without, without telling them, you know, this is wrong. Grandparents who do not give good advice. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. And yes, this is talking about monetary, it's talking about money, it's talking about riches, it's talking about wealth. And it is a good thing to leave a monetary inheritance to your children's children. But a godly inheritance is even more important. Because look at the, the, the evil days that we're living in. The time of Jesus' return is close at hand. And we have to teach our children the right way. We need to instruct our children in the way that they should go. As Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, 
I believe that this is talking about training a child up in, in, in the way of righteousness, the way of holiness. But I also believe that it's about training a child up in, in not only the things of God, but also in basic manners. Teaching them how to say yes. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you. No, thank you. I remember when Ariane's uh, third grade teacher was telling us parents, us parents, uh, what she expected from her class, from her students. And Ariane went to a, a private Christian school. And she was saying that she, she did not want the children to say, yeah. She wanted them to either say yes or no. And I told her that I did not just want my daughter saying yes or no. She, she's just a little child. I wanted her to have manners. I wanted her to say, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, thank you. No, thank you. And this sort of thing. And her teacher was like blown away. Like she, she had never heard that sort of thing before. But Ariane is now 24 years old. And still she says, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. And yes, sir. No, sir to older folks. And I'm the same way. I will say, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. To older folks. Because we were taught that way. It's basic manners. It's basic politeness. We must leave an inheritance of basic decency and manners and respect for our children and our children's children to follow we must show them this is the right way. Walk ye in it. Grandparents are wise. They give good advice to their grandchildren. Grandchildren should be able to sit down and talk things over with their grandparents. Grandparents have years and years of experience that they should be able to share with their grandchildren. It should always be a no judgment zone with grandparents grandchildren should feel free they they, they, they should be feel okay to, to just come and find a listening ear and they should always feel comfortable sitting and talking things over with grandparents grandparents are encouragers you, grandparents, you encourage your grandchildren and you make them feel loved. You make them feel wanted. I remember one Christmas when we went over to, to my wife's uh, sister's house for our usual family Christmas meal. My wife went into the house and she was greeting everyone. And I, I was still outside because I was getting all of the, the cooked food and the pots and stuff organized so I could bring them inside the house. And when, when my wife walked into the house, her, her grandfather saw her, and he said, what, where, where's my grandson? I see his wife, but where's my grandson? And my, grand, my, my, my wife was like, Papa, I'm your granddaughter too. And he said, yeah, but where's my grandson? You know, he, he made me feel really good. He made me feel like I was wanted. He made me feel like he loved me, you know, and... Now that he's gone, you know, I, I, I miss him. I miss him. Because he made me feel loved. Grandchildren, honor your parents. Grandparents, make sure you are worthy or you're deserving of that honor. Do not let your grandchildren down. Be an example for them. You know, I found this, um, this poem. I want to leave you with this poem. What are grandparents made of? Hope and pride, pure joy inside, warm hugs and kisses, shooting star wishes, tinkles and fun and sprinkle of sun, hands to hold hearts of gold, that's what grandparents are made of. Tales from the past, memories to last, laps for reading, I love you greetings. Wisdom to, to teach 
always in reach. Toys galore, eyes that adore, that's what grandparents are made of. Patience and time, trees to climb, baby photos in frames, childhood games, bragging rights, sleep overnights, comforting arms, magical charms, that's what grandparents are made of. Kindness and care, affection to share, heart to heart talks, unhurried walks, faith and trust, spoil, spoiling a must, endless love, a gift from above. That's what grandparents are made of. Written by Terry Harrison. Now, all of this stuff is what grandparents are made of. Grandparents are, are they, they're, they're, they, they spoil their grandchildren, but they also teach them the right way. We teach them about the love of God, and that is the most important thing. Love your grandchildren. Show them a, a, an example. And so, I never want to close a program without asking this question. Do you know who Jesus is? Do you know him as your personal savior? And if you don't, you can because he made it so easy for us. He did all the work. He paid the whole bill. We owe nothing. Our debt is paid in full. All we have to do is to come to Jesus and receive that free gift of salvation. Here's how you do it. Follow me in this prayer. And if you really want to receive that salvation, just believe it in your heart as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Wash me in the blood of Jesus and help me to serve you. Help me to resist evil. Help me to resist temptation. Thank you for your gift of salvation. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. I pledge my life to you now, Lord Jesus. And I thank you in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, now you have a relationship with your heavenly Father. What I want you to do is to get yourself a Bible and read your Bible every day. That's how you build up your relationship. That's how you learn about your heavenly Father. That's how you talk. You learn to talk with him, learn to commune with him because that is his word and Jesus is the word that became flesh. So read your Bible, read the scriptures every day. Get a highlighter and highlight the verses that are meaningful to you, the verses that, that, that are promises to you. Jesus is faithful to fulfill every promise that he's ever made to you. So stand on those promises. Then I want you to find a church, a Bible-believing church, a church who believes in a right way and a wrong way and who teaches the right way, not one of those progressive churches who embraces the world and the things of the world. Those kind of churches turn away from and hold on to a spirit-filled church, a, a church that believes and teaches righteousness and holiness, that believes that you can walk in a way that is not right. You can do things that are not right. Join this church. Be discipled in this church. And when the Lord Jesus comes back, he will find you doing what it is that you should be doing. And he'll take you to be with him. You will be one of, the sheep, one of his sheep that when he separates, that you will be on his right hand. He said, welcome. Enter in. And that is what we're all striving for. I want to say thank you so much for joining us week after week, for going on to our website and 
looking at, uh, at, at our other videos and our other teaching and for your support. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And my name's Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed. Happy Grandparents Day.